Okay, continuing with this problem, the standard normal curve is found by this equation and other normal curves are found by this one. SAT scores can be normalized. In fact, they, many of them are. So if you take this equation and put it in your calculator, you probably want to pause, put this into your calculator and see if you can get a good window. I'll help you get a good window too. Uh, so if I put this in, and I try to look at the window. Well, they tell me that scores are between 200 and 800. So that's what I'm going to put in, 200 and 800. That might help. And then if I graph this, I know the normal curve doesn't go up very high. Oh, that looks like a solid line. Hmm. Not so good. So let's try this. Uh, I think that this is actually might be very small for my Y max. Well, let me do this though first. Uh, I want to change that to 100. Graph this. And I don't see anything. So if I zoom in <coughs> on this one a little bit, I have a window. Let me get this window up. I have a window that goes from, oh, well, look at how small that is. Negative 200 to 800 on the X's, but the Y's, very small and I got a solid line there showing up and what that means is that that thing I still need to go smaller on this thing so if I go uh, how about point zero five and see if I can start getting a graph here now there's a graph I was getting a straight line so I knew something was wrong and I realized I didn't put this squared in here. Uh, regardless, my window was starting to be pretty good. Uh, there's start, the start of my standard normal curve. I got to fix the window just a little bit better. And maybe put this one at uh, 0, 0, 005. And this one at 0 0.01. See what happens there. And I think we should get a pretty good picture. So there's a distribution of the scores for the SAT. So you can sketch a picture from your calculator and sort that out. But if I look at this, now let's answer some of these questions. Sketch the graph. Estimate the average score. Well, if I look at this, this one here is the standard normal curve centered around the y-axis. How did I shift this one? Well, I shifted over to 518. So the highest point there seems to be 518. So if I do this uh, average score, I'm going to estimate it at 518. That's in the middle. And standard normal curve, the middle is the average. And then uh, if I look at the 90th percentile, this is kind of fun to play around with because this is uh, sets you up a little bit for calculus, but it helps you find the area under the curve. So if I go to my calculator, and look at the graph. I'm going to estimate that the 90th percentile is going to be all the scores equal to that one and below. So if I go out here, this is 518 and this is 800. So I'm going to guess probably about 700 and let's see what happens with that. So we go second calc and this number seven helps you find the area under the curve. So I'm going to hit that one and we said that we're going to go lower limit. Lower side is 200. And then our upper limit, we're going to enter. Upper limit is going to be, I don't know, let's guess 700. And let's see what this looks like. Ooh, there's the area. Oh, too much. So this says that this would be the 94th percentile. So you can play around with that one. Calculate something less than 700. Uh, the shading is going to stay there. That's the unfortunate part. So if I start though at 200 again, and my upper limit uh, about 650, you can enter an 87 percent. So it's going to be somewhere in between those. If you don't like the shading, you can go second draw, <clears throat> and you can go clear draw. And so then you can come back if you want to see exactly where it is. So somewhere between 650 and 700, I want you to make a better estimate and find out where that might be. But that's using the normal curve and then the area under the curve 
Uh, this is a precursor to calculus using that function and also stats with the standard normal curve and this normal curve. So 90th percentile is between 650 and 700. I want you to get more accurate. Get close, 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 close and see how close you can get and we'll ask you in class. The next problem is the logistic curve and this curve you do see in population studies and so if you take apes or some other biology courses you'll see this uh, dealing with carrying capacities and such with um, different populations. And so this is the logistics growth curve right here and then Y is population size and X is the time. So here's an example. We have 4,500 people, one student returns from interim with a contagious and long-lasting virus. The spread of the virus is modeled by this equation. SES cancels classes when 40% more of the people are infected. How many are infected after five days? So all you would do is plug in five there. And then how many days will S after how many days will SAS cancel classes? So we need to get over the 40% mark. So those are the two questions. So go ahead and graph this and see if you can get an appropriate window for this, knowing that there's 4,500 people on campus. Now, here's my graph. And if you look at this, this is the typical logistics curve. And so it's going to increase very rapidly, and then it's going to taper off. In fact, the a uh, horizontal asymptote for this would be y equal to whatever this value is up here. You could trace it and get an idea for this curve. It looks like I'm going to be approaching 4,500. Why does that make sense? Well, that makes sense because as t goes to infinity, this Expo exponential right here, e to the negative 0.8t is going to go to zero. This is going to be approximated by zero. And when this is approximated by zero, this would be one plus zero, so I go to 4,500 over one. So in the long term, this virus is pretty uh, catchy. <laughs> Everybody can catch it. So uh, looking at the curve again, I can go to, uh, I can plug this in by hand or else I can plug it in with the table and I can plug in what 5 is and then so I estimate about 54 people will be infected with this after that time period and then we have to figure out how many days after how many days will SAS cancel classes so we don't reach the 4500 mark so we need 40 percent 40 percent of 4500 that would be my y value. So I want to figure out what that's going to be. So I go to my calculator. And so we have 40%, 4,500, 1,800. So when we reach 1,800, we're going to be in trouble. So that's my y value. So I can type this in here, 1,800, graph and then find my intersection. And we get about 10 days. Wow, this thing is spreading fast. So after about 10 days, um, and we write this out, one plus four, four, nine, nine, e to the negative point eight t, we solve this out, T is approximately 10 days. And the logistics curve is just a nice little introduction to that, but we're just mainly using our calculator to set these things up. And so this is part B. This last example deals with the Richter scale, and the Richter scale is purely based on logarithms. So when you see this 7.5 and this 9, uh, you can read this, by the way, uh, 7.5, that would be an exponent, and 9 would be an exponent, and so they are logarithms. And so if you look at this, the Richter scale reading is equal to the log of the intensity divided by some initial value. And in this case, we're going to use I, uh, I naught as 1. Find the intensity of both and compare. 
So if I do this, r is equal to the log of i. And if I do this for the first one, 7.5, 7.5 is going to be equal to the log of i. This is base 10, so this is simply 10 to the 7.5 is equal to i. And in a similar fashion, I can do the exact same thing with the 9. The intensity for that one would be 10 to the 9. Now, how do these compare? On a scale, you think, oh, there isn't much difference between 9 and 7.5. But if you deal with the logarithms, there is a huge difference. So if I take these two, 10 to the 9th, and I divide by 10 to the 7.5, I get 10 to the 1.5. I can subtract the exponents, which is approximately 31.622. So what does this mean? Well, in all actuality, the, the uh, 9 on the Richter scale is going to be 31 times as intense as the 7.5. So even though these numbers seem very close, there's a huge difference in the intensity as you go up. It's exponential. And so that's something to always be aware of when you hear this on the news reports. What's the difference between a earthquake that registers a 5 and one that registers an 8. Well, it's a considerable amount of difference. So in this section, you'll see quite a few applications of logarithms and exponentials. You'll have to be able to solve them, and you also will have to, be use, your, uh, have to use your calculator uh, to solve. Given an x, find the value estimate for y, and also given a y, estimate what x is. Thanks. Have a good day.